So I've just come to this car park um, as a bit of a practice job, really. Um, there's plenty of car park bays here. Uh, there's a few curves as well. This is all a curved um, bit of edging and more bays. And I thought, let's pretend this is a job. You come into the job and customer wants to do something with this car park. So how are we going to go about doing that? Um, and how can uh, the, the new iDig uh, 3D Rover, um, Spotman Rover, and the iPoint software help us out with that. So what I've done is, as you would with anyone, you'd come in and you'd, you'd you know, obviously find out what the client wants to do, um, and you'd measure up. The key things with this, maybe they want to add some more parking bays to it. Maybe they want to change the surface. For example, you know, go to tarmac or something. Um, anyway, as an example job, um, I've surveyed this area and it took less than 10 minutes, almost quicker really than using a tape measure and a damn sight more accurate. So um, everything's turned on, got a fix, uh, got 21 of 33 um, possible satellites it reckons um, and we've got them on all the GPS, GLONASS, um, BDS, Galileo etc. So that's the Chinese, the Russian, the American systems, all European systems. Um, we're using everyone's satellites, as many as we can get, because that's what we're after, um, and different signal strength. You can see all of that. But what I've done is I've gone into survey, and I've done an area survey, because I'm not too worried about levels, particularly. I'm just looking at this area um, of what, what we've got here. So um, I've gone for area survey, and you can see here um, that I've already, here's one I'd done earlier, um, already got a, a bit of a, a map up of, of what we've got. So you can see where we're stood here. You've got the car park area, um, the disabled bays, and then um, obviously the entrance all marked up. And the accuracy of this can be as good as you want it to be. If you want to, you know, capture this, this curve um, over here, maybe a bit more accurately, then take more points. But for me, you know, that's good enough, I think. I certainly didn't measure out what I was doing. I just dotted a few around and, and, it's, and it's drawn that all up for me. So nice and simple. Um, and then a quick effort in the little CAD feature. Um, I put in these bays along here um, just, uh, just to sort of show that off. So we can go back, um, go to the CAD feature. Now we're in CAD. So we can select um, one of these lines, for example. Um, and you can just see it's, it's, it's highlighted red there. Um, go to edit and I can, I can delete that, I can lengthen it, I can offset it, which is what I did here. I used the offset to give me the car park spaces, obviously, as they, as they go. Um, and, and that's really easy to do that. You know, some very basic CAD features um, are very easy to access. There's all kinds of things you can, you can do with this. Um, and if you're struggling to use your fingers to point at things, you've got a little pointer here that you can, you can select look nearest or end point. So that'll now go on the end of that end of that line like that. You know, real useful and thought about when it comes to touchscreen. You're on site. Maybe you've you've you know selected a point or you've created a line that you didn't want to create. You've accidentally, you know, captured something you didn't want. You can very quickly come in here and, and delete that. Um, which which is really really good um, and all literally at the touch of a finger so that is very very simple I think they've done a pretty good job on making that work you can zoom in and out um, obviously this is a very very basic little drawing I've made for myself here but you could use this feature to maybe clean up or or um, switch on and off layers um, if you were given a drawing you know that had that had a lot more information on it um, it wouldn't be too hard to, to play around with. So um, that's a little bit on the cab feature. You can see the, uh, what I've done. So what we can also do then um, is work out uh, an area, for example. So um, we go down to measure. So we've got data, draw and measure. And now we're looking to measure. Um, we've got distance, so I can measure a distance. So if I wanted to know what the distance is between 0.27 and 0.28, um, I should be able to do that. Hang on a minute. Uh, what measure distance? First position is number 27. Second position is number 28. And it's already telling me it's 21 and a half meters long. So that's actually this line along here. Really, really straightforward, really quick. Um, 
and and if I wanted to go up maybe to point two as well diagonally or or maybe I wanted to capture another um, another point you know I could add all those together very very quickly but let's do um, area for example so I just click on the area that I want to capture it doesn't take too long to click on all of your all of your points and again you can be as accurate as you want around these curves um, you know you don't need to get absolutely everything um, but the more accurate you know the more points you you do and the more you select the better your area um, or the more accurate your area is it's telling me i've got 493 square meters there essentially 492.77 um, again really really quick that is as quick as i filmed it is how you can do this um, which which means I know exactly how big this is. I haven't had to do any, oh, I'll allow that and fiddle that and guesstimate. There's been none of that going on. Um, real straightforward uh, with, with the software. So that's good. Um, and there's all kinds of things you can do beyond that as well. But, you know, just for basics here, um, I'm still learning this system myself. You know, this is how I found it, it to be quite useful. Um, so... If you want to, let's say now we want to um, stake out some points. So we've got this, you know, I've drawn this car park up myself, essentially. Um, maybe they want to add an area on um, and or, or maybe we want to set some of these bays out, let's say. So let's pretend these aren't drawn. If I wanted to set out this particular area, um, you know, for the line markers or whatever, um, how would I go about doing that? So we can get a stake out. Now we're looking potentially to point stakeout. You can do point stakeouts, you can do line stakeouts. A line would be, let's say if you were, you were doing a curb um, and you wanted to literally stake, you know, and maybe spray uh, up a line for the guys digging or um, whatever, you know, whatever it might be. You can walk along the line and it'll literally tell you when you're on the line and when you're off the line. So that's what line stakeout's about. We're looking to do point stakeouts. We literally want to know, you know, the, the end of a, of a bay and obviously it's at 90 degrees. So very, very straightforward. Now we can walk around here um, and quite easily select positions. So for example, um, we picked number four, you know, again, this is all touch, very, very easy. Um, we've got the tilt compensator on, which is a, another massive bonus. Um, the effort when you're trying to either capture information or stake it out, the effort of holding this thing and getting this bubble lined up on the top here is, well, even the wind blows you around and, and that makes quite a difference because, you know, this dome is um, nearly, you know, two metres up in the air. Um, doesn't take very much deviation down here to for your point to be in a, a completely different place, um, even though the bottom of the... the bottom of the thing hasn't moved so to have the tilt compensation on is brilliant and it and it just means that I mean I'm not saying I'm going to lean it about you know all over the place but it, it helps us to keep it in the right place so we'll go over here I obviously know where point four is because it's on the ground and it's an existing point um, but as we get closer you can see that the bullseye comes up and it starts sort of almost talking you in you get these little little bings um, and then as you get closer to that tells you up here how far away you are um, and as you get closer the circle goes green and you know you're pretty much where you need to be so I always try and keep the thing upright anyway I think it's good practice to do that um, but you can see that yeah we're virtually on that and as far as it's concerned um, you know that's four mil and nine mil out so I think that's pretty damn good really and obviously we knew that that was the position um, so yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. You can obviously select, um, any of these points really. If we wanted to, uh, wanted to make, uh, uh, for example, the end point of here, I get that little pointer out, I go to end point and it literally snaps me uh, a thing. What it also does is it gives you a flag I've noticed when you've set a point out. So if you had multiple points that you were trying to do around a, a, even a radius or something or, or just where there's lots of information, you're trying to sort of pinpoint out lots of little things within a small area, um, this actually tells you uh, which ones you've done and which ones you haven't, which I think is a really good feature. So anyway, we'll go over to this car park bay. 
let's see how uh, how good we are. Obviously, we know where it is. Um, it's telling me I want to be about there somewhere. So that's 15 mil and 12 mil out in both directions. I wonder which way. Yeah, there you go. Well, I mean, it's not bad. Who knows if the line markers are correct either. Um, but according to GPS, you know, with, with 1 mil and 17 mil, it reckons, it darts about a bit. Um, and obviously we are on a bit of a cloudy day here. And we've got 20 of the 32 satellites. It reckons it's got a fix on, but um, yeah, I don't think that's too bad at all. You'd certainly be happy enough um, marking out Car Park Bay to that, wouldn't you? So I think that's the thing with this. Um, there's all kinds of things that can um, that, that can mean that your your accuracy is um, maybe well, how accurate do you need to be? How accurate do you need to be and how accurate do you want to be? Um, but anyway, I will explain that in a different um, in a different video about the correction signals and um, the issues that you get running GPS around uh, buildings and trees, etc. So, but anyway, for now, um, yeah, that's how we could quite easily set out things. Um, it wouldn't even take me very long, um, as it didn't when I drew these spaces, uh, to draw... I mean, literally draw an extra area onto here. Let's say they wanted to put another few bays in um, over in this area here. You know, we could extend this line, build that out by a certain amount really, really quick. Um, so, and they, this is all just doing it in 2D as well. We haven't even looked at the 3D elements. Um, there'll be a few videos on this uh, system coming up uh, as I try and explain different features where I can, because you've got to have the right jobs to show it off really. Um, but just... Uh, here on a Sunday, messing about um, with the uh, with the little Spotman Rover. Um, yeah, been impressed. Pretty easy to use. Uh, I did get shown a few features about three weeks ago. It's been a while. I haven't been able to get it out of the, out of the box and have a play. But just having a bit of a play um, in a in a car park local to me, and yeah, that's uh, already. I could take this drawing home. Um, I could give it, I could give it heights. I could, I mean, how much information do I want to capture? I could, I could set the car, you know, the footpath out versus the car park and have that height difference of the curb there and things. But, um, yeah, already really straightforward, um, pretty simple to use. And yeah, I could, I could use this information, uh, for various things, pricing, um, right through to, um, creating a model that I could then put in the excavator. So, uh, yeah, anyway, enjoy the video. Uh, more, more videos coming up on this uh, iPoint software and GPS. Uh, very kindly um, been lent this system by uh, Neil from NASCO DigTech. Um, he is the main man for iDig uh, in the UK and he's got uh, a GPS expert as well, Graham, who uh, is very helpful and has um, help me, help me trying to, trying to use this system better and get the, the most features from it because there's an awful lot you can do, um, with this. Uh, but yeah, obviously got to start somewhere and got to learn. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. See you again shortly.